What's up everybody? Let's take a look at what happened today in the stock market. In front of us, we have the S&P 500 e-micro futures. Now this was 8.30 in the morning. If you look to the far right there, you can see my, my uh, I had five contracts at this point and I was down $106. Uh, these positions were open. Of course, I didn't close them yet, but I was down $106. So just for some of you people out there like, do I always make a, is, is every position I ever have always running at a profit? No. You can see this is an open position, which I haven't closed, but you can see it running at a loss here of $106.25, right? Okay. But I didn't panic, and there's a good reason why I didn't panic. Okay, stick around to the end of this video, because I'm going to show you whether or not, did I make a profit today? Did I lose money today? I'm also going to show you how do I know whether I to trade long or short? I've talked in several videos before this one. I talked about make sure you get confirmation. So I'm going to show you how I get confirmation so that I know whether or not I'm going to be trading short or long. Okay, I don't normally do uh, day trading. The last few days it's been that way just because the market's been really hopping and hot. But normally I do swing trades, especially on the long side. They, they tend to take uh, play out a little bit longer. Okay, so stick around the end of the videos. I'm going to tell you how to how to know to look at the market in such a way that you get confirmation and know what, how you're going to trade long or short. Okay, and those trade when you take a position, take a position. I'm referring to the fact that it could take several days for the the position to play out before you close it. Okay, sometimes it happens in one day. Okay, so anyway, let's take a look at the next the next picture here. Now here we are a little bit later. This is 11, upper left hand corner. You can see it's 11 o'clock. So this is about, you know, two and a half hours later. You can see I'm now the position, same five contracts that I shorted still sitting there. Now I'm up $125. Okay. And why, why didn't I panic? Why didn't I close those, those five contracts earlier when they were down and, and like, oh my gosh, I'm losing money. I need to close this out before I lose more money. <laughs> because I had confidence I had high confidence the market was going to move down. My timing was bad. I took those five uh, short contracts on the previous day, and I took them really at a bad time. You know, my timing wasn't very good. But, and I've talked about this before. If you if you haven't watched my recent videos, look in the link in the description, the link of this video just below. You can go watch after you watch this video where I talked about always start small. I'm gonna say it again: start small. So even though my timing was bad, what saved my butt was that I had a small position. I only took five contracts. For me, that's small. Okay. Okay, so that's why I, I, I didn't panic. And I'm going to, like I said already at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I knew and had high confidence because I had confirmation that the market was going to move in my favor. Okay, so at this point, two and a half hours later in the morning, I'm up $125 instead of being down, okay? Now let's look at the next next screenshot here. Now you can see upper left hand corner just four minutes later, I had closed the contracts. Okay, I used a trailing stop. This one happened to be a trailing stop without a limit, just a straight up trailing stop. And you can see the profit loss at this point is over a thousand dollars. Okay, for the day. That's profit loss for the day, just to be clear. Okay. Let's take a look at the next picture. Now this is just 10 minutes later. I want you to understand that. You look upper left hand corner, same day, just 10 minutes later. Now look to your right with all the yellow squares. Now I start to really what I call leaning into this, into this, um, the market. And I went from five to 10 contracts. Now I'm it's not a huge position for me, but it, let's just call it kind of a still kind of small or maybe medium sized position for my account. And I got 10 micro contracts here. Okay. So I've doubled the size from the previous position I had. So we're just talking 10 minutes later and I doubled the position size, right? I closed the previous one and now I went leaned into it. Why would I do that? Well, look at the candlestick. A candlestick is full red. 
it, it isn't the candlestick is not um it's not rebounding it, it's actively going down okay i won't dive too deep in that today because that's more of a timing thing you got it the more experience you have you'll, you'll kind of figure those things out you don't necessarily need to do that to still be profitable okay But 10 contracts short, you'll notice that the position for the 10 contracts is already up $185. It happened kind of quick, okay? Now look at the average price right there. It's one of the one of the uh, three squares, rectangles I got circled. Look at the average price, 4421.7. Okay. Now look down a little bit below that. You'll see a, a rectangle down there. It says 4418. So my average price is 4421, but the, the but the price of the of the futures contracts are already down to 4418. That's why that's why it's up 185 dollars, right? Because I'm shorting it. So the market's moving down, right? Okay, let's look at the next next screenshot. Okay, this is a this is about I think an hour later. Yeah, 1118, and now. The new time is 1224. So an hour and six minutes later, okay? I actually went to the went to the supermarket. <laughs> I had to go pick up some food, right? My refrigerator was empty. So some of you may be saying, oh my gosh, you went to the supermarket in the middle of 10 contracts? That's right. I'm not telling you to do that. And I'm not giving you financial advice, by the way. I'm simply sharing with you what I do. Why did I go to the supermarket? Because I had high confidence that everything was going to be fine. And in just a bit here, I'm going to tell you about how, 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 how did I get that high confidence? Okay, we're going to talk about that here in a minute or two. Okay, so an hour and, and about six minutes later, it's the same 10 con shorted contracts. Okay, the average price hasn't moved, obviously, 4421. Now look at the profit loss open. I'm up about $722.50 on this just this position. And, but the difference now is you can see I got back home, I put the groceries away, and what do I have? I have a trailing stop. Look at the trailing stop. You see the trailing stop just below there, right? You, it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of cut off, but it's the trailing stop is at 440975. If you go down further, you'll see that the price, current price, uh, of the futures was down at 4407.25. So what does that mean? That means I had approximately a two dollar and fifty cent trailing stop. I want you to get that part right there. For you guys and gals out there that are struggling on, on how do you lock in profits, this is it right in front of you. If you need to pause the video, rewind it, listen to what I'm telling you, go ahead and do it ten times until you get it. Whatever it takes. Okay. I got home, I liked what I saw. You know, you don't have to leave positions hanging. You can put your trailing stops if you want right away or stop loss. But I'm just showing you here how to lock in your profits. This position moved very profitable for me. And once it did, and it was moving profitable, okay, I made sure I put my trailing stop in there to lock in my profits. Okay, if you don't know how to do trailing stops, especially on the TD Ameritrade platform, TOS, I'll put a link in the description. You can go check it out. I think I did it in the last video, okay? So you see the market there is trading at 4407.25, and my order, my trailing stop order, is trailing behind by $2.50, right? If you do 440725, add 250, you get 4409.75, right? So as the market's moving down, my trailing stop's just... Moving with it, two dollars and fifty cents behind it. Right as the market goes down, deeper and deeper and deeper, my position is becoming this position is becoming more and more profitable because I'm shorting it. Obviously, it's trailing above it, two dollars and fifty cents. Everybody get that? That's how you lock in the profits. Now, for I, I had you know for some of you guys out there, guys and gals are saying, "Well, I don't day trade. I don't day trade." That's okay. I get it. Some of you don't have accounts, you can't day trade. No problem. You don't have to day trade to still do this. This still works. Once your position goes profitable, you know, just make sure you're using a good a good till canceled, right? And like I said, you can when you're done watching this video, go watch my previous video in the link below, and it'll show you how to place this kind of trailing stop order, okay? So even if you want to have a, a trade that just, you know, is 
you're going to take a day or two or whatever because your broker is not going to let you day trade. That's fine. You can do that. Okay. Don't. I don't. I don't like the idea of of, of waiting around and manually closing positions. That's a big no no. You don't want to do that. I'm not saying never, but you should have at some point. As soon as your positions get profitable, you should be locking in the profits. Okay. Now, before we go to the last picture, and I'm going to show you, you know, what were my what was my profit loss for the day. For those of you out there that maybe have cash accounts or or you know, and you and you can't. Um, and you feel like, okay, I can't day trade and my account's not big enough. If you've got three or $4,000 in your account, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money because I don't give financial advice. But that's enough money to open up a margin account, okay? And, you, and I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. There is no day trading rule when you're trading futures. A lot of you didn't know that, did you? You trade stock, you trade stock, you trade ETF, blah, blah, blah. That's great. And I'm saying, I'm not going to badmouth stocks and ETF. They have their place. But there's no day trading rule for futures. And in today's world with e-micros, <laughs> okay, you can really trade futures, guys and gals. That's basically what I'm telling you, okay? All right, let's take a look at the last, last screenshot. Did I make any money? Well, there you go. I made $1,520 today, a total of 15 contracts traded for the day. Okay. So the, the previous picture showed $1,700. So some of you may be asking, well, how did it go from, why didn't you get out at $1,700? Why is it 1500 Because that's the whole point of a trailing stop. And what you, and what I suggest, though, well, again, I'm not giving financial advice, but if you want to learn something here today, don't try to get perfectly time the market and get Mac and squeeze every last little dime and get your maximum profit because om almost everybody that tries to do that fails. Okay. Let your trailing stop lock in your profits. Don't worry about what you're getting. You know, some of you may have much bigger accounts than me and you're locking in 15,000 instead of $17,000. Okay. Some of you have much smaller accounts, so you might be locking in $150 rather than $170, okay? It doesn't really matter what your account size is. The principle still applies, and it still works, okay? I will say this much. Be aware of your commissions because there are commissions on futures, unlike stock, okay? N nowadays, there's no commissions on stock anymore, but there are commissions on futures, so be aware of that. You need to know your commissions, Okay, you, you don't, don't just be open and closing positions on future contracts if you're not getting enough profitability because the, the commissions can give, you know, be a problem for you on small accounts. So just be aware of that, okay? All right, so that's why I didn't get a $1,700 profit today. I got a $1,520 profit because the market started moving back up, working against my favor, so to speak. It hit my trailing stop, which, by the way, was only $2.50 up from the lowest point from where the market was for me. Got it? It moved back up 250, hit my trailing stop, stopped out, became a market order, closed all my positions, or bought back. Because right, I was short, bought back and closed my positions. I'm up 1520. Am I a happy camper? Of course I'm a happy camper. That's fifteen hundred dollars for the day. Okay. It's not bragging or doing all that stuff. It's just getting to the place where you're not trading scared, you're trading smart. Okay. That's how I like to call it. Trade smart, not scared. All right. I always try to keep this video short, so I, I'm. This one's a little bit longer than normal. Let's take a. Bear with me. Okay, now we're going to go into what I promised. How do I know to trade short or long? Okay, so we're looking at the. Uh, I'm looking at the. In this case, the E Mini, S and P 500. You know what we call the larger contracts, not the micros, but the little bit larger contracts, the E Mini. Okay. This is September contract, but this is fine. I use this a lot. I use the current contracts to look at data, okay? All right, I'm trading the December ones, but I'm looking at the current ones to, for, for data. All right, look at the far left there. You see upper left-hand corner there. Um, it says, we don't short here. Well, how do I know not to short there? Okay, look down but st straight below where it says left-hand side. We do not short here. Look below. You'll see I've got the, the momentum circled. That momentum looks really high, doesn't it? And it is high. That momentum is like tweaked. It's high. Okay. Now look below that. That's a big daddy forecast. For those that don't know, that's my own algorithm, but you can get that from TD Ameritrade. I think it's called the 
uh, what's it called? Uh, forecast something. Just look for forecast in the studies. Okay. Um, it's not like this, but it's a good place to start. So anyway, Big Daddy forecast. Look at that number, 415. Now I know because I work with the Big Daddy forecast, my my own algorithm here, the forecast or a predictive indicator. I know that 415 is is good, but it's not great, not for shorting anyway. The larger the number, the greater the chance of, of a short position opportunity coming up, or the market going to be is going to pull back. So 415 is good. It's good. It's kind of high, but it's not great. Okay, so that's important. Now look at the very bottom. The VIX. I have on there VIX flat, barely rising. Okay. If the VIX is down or flat and just going sideways, that means there's very little volatility. Okay. If the VIX is down or flat, prices are normally going to go up or maybe sideways. Okay. But price, but the stock market's not going to go down. So it's just the opposite. If the VIX goes is go if the VIX goes up, prices go down. If the VIX is flat or going down, then prices are either going to be are either going to be kind of sideways or going up. Usually they're going up. And and over a long period of time, they're going to generally going to be creeping up, going up and up and up, little by little. So that's why we don't short there. Because I okay. So remember I talked about confirmation. So I didn't get enough confirmation here. That's why I wouldn't short here. Because even though momentum was... A lot of people trade on momentum alone and they get caught out, right? I bet you some of you have done that, haven't you? <laughs> so the top indicator there, the stochastic momentum index says, short me, short me. But the Big Daddy forecast says, ah, the number's good, but it's not great. So I'm not getting, I'm not getting a strong sense of confirmation. And the VIX for sure is not giving me confirmation that the market is going to pull back. Okay, let's look to the to the right of that where it says the first of the two that says we do short here. Momentum was high, just like the last example. That's great. Look at the Big Daddy forecast now. 457. That's a lot higher than 415. And like I said, I happen to know the history of this indicator really well because I use it a lot. I've I programmed the logic into it and all that. I know 457 is a big number. So now my confidence is I got two indicators giving me some confirmation that things are looking good for something's going to happen to the market soon. And w look below at the very bottom, the VIX. Look at the VIX, kind of bumpy and rising, right? The VIX is starting to rise up. It was really, really low there at 628, really low. That's actually good. The VIX bottomed out and then began to rise from 628 kind of through 712 and through 719. Look at it. You see some little peaks in there and it's rising up, isn't it? It's beginning to go up. You notice how that VIX rising stage comes after the momentum and after the Big Daddy Forecaster, right? It kind of happens a little bit later after it. That's confirmation right there, guys and gals. That's what we're talking about. All three of these indicators are working together, slightly skewed from one another, and they're all confirming that something's going to happen in the market and there's going to be a pullback. So what happened about seven trading days later? Boom. About four of the five days in a row were down. And yeah, I traded that short on the E-Micros and made about 500 bucks. I kept it small. Okay, look at the, I'm gonna wrap this up in the last one. I'm sorry about the video being long, but I wanna share this with y'all. Okay, I know some of you wanna know how to do this. Let's look at the last one to the far right. We do short here. Another example of how I know to short. Confirmation is key. Momentum is high. And in this case, the momentum you know, that momentum's like, it, it takes, a sh it, it, it had like a very sharp downward motion to it. Okay. That's kind of nice when you see those. Okay. And but look at the big daddy below it. Almost the same as the last time. 456. Big number. Big number. Okay. So I got two indicators telling me, okay. Now you'll notice the big daddy forecast is predictive. It has a spike, 456, at least a couple days before momentum turned over. Very nice indicator. Oh, sweet. Okay, at the very bottom on the VIX, look at the way the VIX bottomed out. Right around the same time the Big Daddy forecast was peaking, the VIX was very shallow. Right around like 815, 814, whatever it was. 813, right in that area. Very shallow and very low. Like a little, like a pothole in the road, right? 
And then a couple days later, what did the VIX do? It came up. It went from a pothole in the road of 1545 up to 1791 today. That's good. That's confirmation. That's why today, now I want to wrap this up as I finish this up. That's why today I was able to go to the supermarket <laughs> in the middle of all that going on. Makes sense? You know, I would generally recommend putting a stop loss at minimum before you go to the supermarket. Okay. But, you know, whatever. Okay. Protect your positions at all times. Okay. But that's why I had very high confidence. High confidence. Okay. That I knew things were going to go down. And man, what a big down day. It got down to a little over 1% down today at some point. Okay. And I took advantage of it, of course. All right. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and go ahead and click the bell notification so you get notified as I put the videos out. Hope you all enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you real soon again next time.